I'd like to show you some calculator shortcuts for solving linear equations, but also polynomial equations. By the way, this one just makes me laugh. It has nothing to do with math. It's just so happy. Have you seen this dog? I have now. All right. I don't know why that makes me laugh. Uh, we're supposed to solve for x, y, and z. You can tell I'm a Canadian, at least, not American. The Americans say Z, I say Z. There you go. So uh, X, Y, and Z. So we have a system of three different equations. What this is supposed to mean is that there, there must exist, if, if it's a system of equations, that means there must exist some combination of X and Y and Z that works for this equation and the second one and the third. So in other words, if I told you like X is 1, Z is eight or something like that or whatever, you should be able to put all the numbers in and make the, all three equations work. That's why it's a system of equations, okay? We're implying it works for all of them. So these ones right here, maybe I can give each equation a name. I can call it like one, an equation two, and equation three. Now, if you want to do it by hand, I mean, you absolutely could. It's, you know, slightly annoying, but absolutely. I mean, you may have already learned methods to do it. You could, for example, uh, how would I do this? I would do some people call it elimination, this, this form. When we say we're going to solve something by elimination, we mean like maybe I do like equation 1 plus equation 2. So if I did those, for example, um, I'd get like 3x here. Here I would get uh, 2y minus y, so that'd be minus y. And these are here would cancel out. That's the whole idea of elimination, right? I'd put that then, and maybe then I would, you know, add that answer, you know, combine it with equation three, spend some time doing it. You absolutely can do this by hand. I'm just trying to show you a calculator shortcut. So we're going to need our calculator for this. So there's a couple ways of doing it, depending on what calculator you use. If you use a TI Inspire, you just go to menu, you go to algebra, and you just solve a system of equations. If you're on the TI-84, you go to apps, I think it is, and it's polysmult2, which is you know, polynomial and simultaneous equations. So let me just show you on the TI Inspire. So I'll do a uh, new document, I'll do a new calculator. Here we go. So what I would do, I would press menu first, I would go to algebra, then I go to solve a system of linear equations. Hey! Now, different calculators have different ways of getting there, but your calculator has a way of doing this. So if you do this here, well, how many equations do I have? You just have to put in all the info here. So in this case, I've got three equations, right? Uh, what are my variables? Are they x, y, z? Because they could be other things. It could be like a, b, c, or p, q, r, whatever. But in this case right here, this looks good. Then it just says put in your equation. So notice I'm just going to go x plus 2y minus z equals 2. Let's go tab and just do the next one. So this is slightly annoying. You just have to put it all in, right? But I'll do the best I can here. Uh, plus z equals minus 1. Don't forget to use that minus symbol there instead of just a negative. And similarly, 5x. The hardest part basically is just putting it all into your calculator, which isn't really that hard. Equals minus 3. There we go. So basically, I'm just going to do this, and boom, it tells me my x, y, and z value. So x is 1, y is 2, z is 3. That was it. Just like that. Okay, so now I know. x, I'll do maybe a different color. So this here is just uh, an example of how it's almost too easy. But there we go. So x is 1, y is 2, z is 3. And you've done it. Now you could check that it works, right? You can put them all into your calculator, and or you can just think about each of them like, you know, 1 plus, let's see, 2 times 2, so that's 4. So 4 plus 1, that gives me 5. 5 minus 3 is 2. Yep. It turns out it works for everything. So this has fully solved it. Isn't that cheating? Doesn't that feel like you're cheating? Well, you kind of are, but that's why I'm showing you some calculator shortcuts. That's how we can do it with our calculators, all right? So um, that's one thing. So that's one trick for solving linear equations. Now, if yet you can have two or three of them, I think the idea is that they're not going to ask you for more of those, at least if you're in SL, so that should be okay. If I had uh, three equations or even more and I was in HL, I'd probably want to use matrices and do some you know, fun elimination stuff there in order to get things to work, but that's if you're HL. If you're SL, two or three equations, there you go. All right, uh, polynomial equations, how do we solve those? By the way, this is awesome. Here's a teacher who understands what's important. Teacher asked the student, you know, uh, create a math meme. <laughs> Presumably, if this is real, a student uh, then said, you know, when your mother calls you by your full name, and it's a little a plus b squared, and the mom says a squared plus 2ab plus b squared. Said, oh, crap, because you expanded. It's cute. 
So let's say, let's say you wanted to solve for x in this equation. This is what they gave you. They said, do this. Okay. Well, if I did it by hand, I mean, I, I, I could at least rearrange this thing, right? So I could say, all right, I've got x squared uh, minus 2x, and maybe then I move my 3 over, so I have a minus 3, and I have equals 0. But if I tried to get x by itself just by manipulating this thing, unless I know how to complete the square, I'm going to get stuck. So what we're actually trying to find, these are the places, keep in mind, these are the x values that make this whole thing equal 0. So that's actually why they're called the zeros or the roots. Okay, so there's a bunch of ways of doing these kind of things. I mean, you could have done this by hand, keep in mind. You could have actually looked at this thing right here. We're trying to, basically, we're trying to find the zeros of this. So there's lots of ways of doing this, right? We can go ahead and, you know, there's lots of different ways you could do it. Um, let's say you wanted to factor it. All right, well, you could see this one right here, depending on how you are with, uh, you know, factoring tricks. Um, you could actually factorize this, I guess. Let's see, you'd get x plus, that'd be 1, and x minus 3. You could check if it works by doing this, right? Square it, yes. 2ab, let's see, 2, yeah, this will work. Um, and from there, then you could see, ah, the zeros, like the, the values that'll make this thing here equal to 0. Well, what would those be? Those would be x equals negative 1 and x equals positive 3. Those are the two values that should make this work, right? So those are going to presumably going to be my answers. So that's with factoring. I could, you know, do a graph of this thing, because if you know how to do a graph, you could actually do that. So you could uh, say, for example, um, maybe I'll do that different color, just to keep things separated here. So that was with factoring. That was that way. If I did it by graphing, I could actually do a graph of the equation. You know, if I did this on my calculator, I would get some sort of graph that looks like, I'll do it in, uh, doesn't matter the color, I guess something like, you know, this right here. And I'd say, ah, well, I would have to find the zeros of this thing. And the zeros would actually be negative 1 and positive 3. So that's another way to do it. You could do this thing we call completing the square, which I think is really boring. You could do that. You could use a quadratic formula, right, which is actually, it tells you the zeros of something, right? So x would equal, how's that again? Minus b plus or minus square root of b squared Minus 4ac, all that over 2a, I believe. Yeah, okay. You could do it that way. You'll still get the same answers. I'm just trying to show you how you could use your calculator to totally cheat and get the same answer. So keep in mind, we're trying to find the zeros or the roots. So let's uh, open up our trusted calculator on the TI-84. It's on PolySmult. On the TI-Inspire, it's uh, under PolyTools. So let me just uh, open this up here. So. Again, on the TI-Inspire, if you don't know what to do, just press Menu, and you go look around, like, mm, Algebra. And you notice then we got Polynomial Tools. I can click there, and I, do I want to find the roots of a polynomial? Yes, if you're in HL, you might be fine complex, but I want real, so that's fine. What's the degree of my polynomial? What that tells me, what's the highest power of x that I have? That's because it could be cubic or quartic or something like that. You could put those in, but in this case, it is to the power of 2, so I'm good. And then I just put in my uh, letters in front. This right here in front of it is an, as a 1. Uh, in front of the x is a minus 2. And in, notice this is this is a2 is in front of the x squared. So that's how you know, like, this is your first thing here. Your second thing, they have to be, if they're not in order, you just got to be careful which variable you call what. It's really important. The one in front of the x squared must be a2. The one in front of the x must be a1. And the one by itself, in this case here is a minus 3. There we go. I press OK. And I say go. And guess what? I get x equals 1, a minus 1, sorry, and x equals minus 3. So see, it still worked. So there's basically lots of different ways to do it. Right? But you end up with the answer. So those hopefully are some really important you know, and really useful tips and tricks. Like I said, your calculator can help you immensely to solve. It helps to know how to do things by hand if you have the tools. But sometimes you just uh, don't feel like doing it, especially if you're on an exam. Like in uh, math applications, you can use your calculator. So why not use it? So this is why this saves you a lot of time.